when I retired. It'll be two years, July 1st. Okay. Then I set up this consulting firm. For rail business? Right. right. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, oh, I have rail engineering contractors. Uh, um, these guys are a uh, real farm manufacturer. Um, uh, Grant Ryder. Um, wow. Track construction companies, rail suppliers. Good for you. Supplier, suppliers. So, I don't know, there's a, a lot's going on. A dozen on. different companies. That I, in, basically, it's just trying to do a little business development. Stuff you've already done. So. Are we ready? Yep. Well, uh, call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone. This is my first meeting, so if I mess up, I told Brian that he could throw a yellow flag. He, he thought he might dref, dress up as a referee, so I'd feel a little more at home. But uh, <laughs> I have to admit a little bit uh, nervousness, but uh, looking forward to working with, with all of you. So I greet any visitors we have. I greet the planning and zoning group, our staff. Uh, it's been an interesting three weeks for me. I told Brian the other day I learned more in three weeks I've lived here 43 years, and I learned more in three weeks about Brandon than I had in those 43 years. And I, I would say that uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, it was a really interesting and pleasurable time. I want to thank Brian and, and Christina especially for the time that they've spent with me to orientate me and to bring me up to speed, and I'm sure at times I ask dumb questions, but uh, I blame that on my age, so it's easy. But, uh, you know, I, I got a chance to view the water and sewer and street. Uh, was extremely impressed and, and uh, appreciated, Raleigh, your time. Uh, I learned that those folks are jacks of all trade. I think we're very fortunate to have uh, the facilities that we have, and that's a great credit to the councils that we've had and leadership that we've had before. I didn't realize what we had for infrastructure, and, and I think we're, we're doing well. And uh, his knowledge was, uh, I didn't understand how, everything he told me, but sure was good. And uh, that, was, that was great. I had a uh, chance to spend some time with our police staff and Jamie Steffel. I got to meet some of the officers, and, and again, uh, I feel like we're in very, very comfortable hands. Uh, Devin gave us some time with the parks and Andrew and Kelly with the with the golf course. It was cool and it was neat to see and I guess the thing I'm most impressed with is I and appreciative of is how responsibly all of you take your jobs. I think that uh, we as citizens should be very grateful for what you do and uh, I almost apologize for for the lack of knowledge, I almost as I told my wife, man, I think we got some of the best kept secret in terms of city that that uh, anyone could have. And so, thank you for what you've done, and uh, appreciate uh, your time with me and in, in getting me oriented, orientated a little bit better to to what's going on here. So, just a little bit on a personal note. First is roll call. Clark. David? Here. Fish? Here. Jorgensen? Here. Cole? Parliament? Here. Mayor Heinitz? Here. Okay, uh, move on here. Approval of agenda. I should have, I think there were copies in the back. Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, approval of the minutes. So we had a May 13, 2021 briefing meeting and a May 17, 2021. 2021 regular meeting. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions or uh, corrections there. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes as printed. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, next is the approval of claims. And again, those were 
listed there for you. And uh, if there's any questions there, otherwise, again, I would entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and, and second to uh, approve the claims. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Same sign. Okay. The consent uh, calendar, um, plat uh, not A is plat a of lots 4A and 5 in block 2, plat of tract 1 of KB Investment Edition, plat of tract 9 of Nelson Edition, plat of lot 1 and block, se block 7 of Tallgrass Edition, and plat of lot 1 and lot 12, block 6 of Tallgrass, and plots of 1 through 4 OD Farm Edition. Are there any questions or on that? Again, we would motion to approve. Motion to approve. And motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, at this point in time, um, we do welcome any visitors that we might have and uh, are open for public, uh, public comment. We do restrict that to five minutes in the fairness to all. Uh, so if there's anyone that would like to make any public comment, the mic is yours. Okay. At this point in time, and Brian said this is the first time we've had a public hearing together with planning and zoning, so I want to welcome planning and zoning. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how we do this, if we well, make a motion to... Yeah, yeah, a motion to have a joint public hearing between City Council and Planning and Zoning Commission. So moved. Motion and second to approve the joint meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. I got it. Okay. So who, who are you folks all here? I know Chuck and <laughs> I know most of you, but is it appropriate that they would introduce, yeah, they introduce themselves introduce real quick? Themselves. Chuck, are you are you on this? I'm on planning. Okay. Go ahead. Alicia. Welcome. Okay. Um, this joint hearing with the Brandon Planning and Zoning Commission on Ordinance 9, number 630, a temporary ordinance regarding the issuance of local medical cannabis establishment permits and or licenses 31 to 35. If this, this ordinance would delay any, or put place a moratorium on any city permits licenses, et cetera, until the State Department of Health has promulgated their regulations by the end of October. Okay. So where do we go from here, Brian, with this? Ask if there's any comments, any public comments. Okay. Are there any public comments on this before we sort of sure here's some things from planning and zoning? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So. So, Mr. Mayor, you can close the public hearing portion. Okay. And then the next action would be a motion by the Planning and Zoning Commission to either recommend a do pass or do not pass uh, Ordinance 630 to the City Council. Okay. So we'll close the public hearing portion of the um, joint meeting and. Uh, Entertain a motion from planning and zoning. I'll move. So, go ahead. Pass. To approve. Yeah, I'm assuming. Recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Approve the recommendation as stated. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve the uh, temporary ordinance regarding the issuance of local medical cannabis establishment permits and or licenses. Is this a joint vote then, or nope. is this just? They make a recommendation first, okay. and then City Council will have a first reading okay. afterwards. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. They need a vote. Go ahead, Tim. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It looks like planning is only recommended. It does. <laughs> For a first reading. How about that? Okay. 
And then we have a second item. First, we got to have a motion by I'm City sorry. Council now for a first reading. Oh, okay. Motion for first reading. Second. Motion and second for first reading by the Council of the uh, Joint or the Brandon, uh, the temporary ordinance. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Medical only. I forgive my ignorance, but what's the status of the recreational? Uh, it's in court. It's at the South Dakota Supreme Court right now. Okay. So, yes. We're waiting on that yep. before it would go into effect, so it's not necessarily going to go into effect. No, and I don't, I don't know when uh, it's on the Supreme Court schedule. Um, right now I think this is just for medical. It's medical cannabis only. So I would anticipate once the court rules, we would get some guidance from the Municipal League once again on what to do with that. So Brian, you're probably thinking we'll probably do the same thing again when it's recreational? If, they, on, if possibly, depending on... Possibly, depends on when it gets... <clears throat> you know, the, the odd thing about medical cannabis is goes into effect July 1st but the Department of Health doesn't have to have its rules in place till the end of October so there's this lag time where everybody's scratching their head as to what to do without some guidance from the state I would hope that the recreational marijuana discussion or court case at the Supreme Court will be decided and they'll, and they'll get right on it and there'll be an implementation down the road I would think that the court would issue some kind of, of ruling that it goes into effect. Is there, a, is there for licenses, is there a limit that? We can, don't know okay. at this point in time. That's one of the things that uh, the Department of Health has to come up with. I would anticipate that their rules will be somewhat similar to alcohol licenses. That's what I was it's wondering. It's the number of licenses based upon population. You know, we have heard absolutely nothing from the state on where they're headed or what they're thinking. I would think, um, <clears throat> I would think so. First class cities, we can set alcohol permits at whatever we want to, as long as it's no less than a dollar per capita. Yeah, so, so I would. 10,000. Yep. I would think that it would be the same. I really think they'll model the whether it's medical or recreational marijuana on all of the liquor laws. Okay. So just just for transparency. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just for transparency and just for the public and the press and all. Brian, would you just reiterate what this ordinance is doing at this time? Sure. It just places a moratorium on any rules or location of any medical cannabis facilities such as growing, processing, or um, dispensaries in the city limits. They won't be, they won't be allowed until after uh, the South Dakota Department of Health uh, devises their rules and adopts those. Okay. So, do I understand it right that uh, we have to allow a license? No, no, the city doesn't have to allow any marijuana licenses in the city if they don't want to. Okay, what this, so this ordinance is just putting that requirement on hold? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Oh. Is July 1st still the, the date? Yep. July 1st is still the implementation date for medical marijuana in the state. So, for example, if somebody has a medical marijuana card issued in another state, they could have marijuana in their possession. And then there's some rules about the amount that go into effect July 1st as well. I think it's up to three ounces. Okay. So, um, 
I know Jamie, Jamie's been talking to her, had a meeting with the state's attorney as well as uh, Sioux Falls Police Department and Minneapolis County. They're developing some joint uh, practices for handling medical marijuana in the meantime. Is, is this type of a, <clears throat> is this what most cities are doing right now? Yes, the, the draft ordinance was developed by the Municipal League and was sent out, and I think most of the cities are, are, are taking a, a very cautious approach until the state figures out how they're going to handle the licenses. So Jack, you could now or later decide to not have any. Most cities are just delaying it sure. and deciding later if they even want any, because you have the option to not have them. And that's basically what we're doing right now. Okay. And, and CCOG, Southeast Council of Government, is the one that writes the vast majority of our zoning ordinances. And since this is a zoning-related issue, they're in the dark as well. So, uh, you know, once we get guidance from the state, CCOG will get that same guidance and can draft whatever legislation we're looking at um, at that time. And again, this spray, I should know this, but how many readings do we actually have on to before it's voted on this this one um, this ordinance is a little bit different typically you have two readings of an ordinance you publish it and then 20 days after publication it goes into effect this one uh, it's declared it as an emergency ordinance so it will go into effect immediately upon publication on June 30th if okay. it's approved okay okay uh, item number two. Thank you. That's it. That's it for you guys. Thank you. Welcome to stay. <laughs> the second item on the on public hearing is first reading of ordinance. Number 631, amending chapters 15, 14, 3, additional use regulations, off-street parking. This allows access aisles, maneuvering and drive areas uh, into yards. We allow uh, parking spaces or parking stalls in, in certain yards and setbacks, but we, don't, we didn't authorize how to get there. So this will authorize those driveways to get to the parking stalls that are permitted. Hey, Brian, I know I asked this Thursday night, but can you think of an area in town where um, where we have uh, parking? I, I'm, I'm envisioning that it's, it's a storefront business and they have parking behind. Could be. Uh, maybe even Orchies over here. Yep, could be. Like could that. be parking in uh, behind. Our building here, even. Could be. Um, and I'm, I'm just thinking, uh, do you know of any I don't know off the top of my head. I think my, my space was until we had to replat it. So I've mm -hmm. got my building as parking lot and then the, the lot right in front of that as well. It goes all the way up to the state house. But technically, that was a different lot than my lot. So we weren't supposed to park on. Yeah. yeah. Remember that was. yeah. Yep. So we had to replat it. So now, with this ordinance, uh, in, in that case, she could have that driveway into that parking Correct. area. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the uh, ordinance nine number 631. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The third uh, ordinance is first reading of ordinance number 632 to rezone track three Heartland edition from NRC Natural Resources District to general business and R2 medium density residential. This relates back to the plat of lots one through four of Odie Farm edition. That will be the new name of the, of the subdivision. Odie Co LLC, Paul Odie is here if you have any questions. Um, they're looking at developing that area. Extending Meadowbrook through to Heritage, south of Meadowbrook 
would be zoned R2 to allow for the construction of fourplexes. And then the, the blue areas north of uh, Meadowbrook Trail would be uh, zoned general business, which would be very similar to the church, dentist, office, just to the east. And is that where Ambush is at too? Yes. Is that right? In that? Okay. Yep. That and it's good. consistent with, with um, our land use plan. We've planned for uh, commercial general business along Holly. Mm -hmm. And then it's traditional to have some type of medium density residential as a buffer between commercial and single family residential. So medium density, what's that, like townhomes? Up to fourplex. Fourplex. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you look on, uh, what page is it? There was, oh, it's in the, it's in the, and we've got another item on this as well. It's the uh, preliminary plan. It will show the location of those townhouses and how they'll be built. And with this, it is also going to open up a road that we've wanted open for Correct. some time too. Yep. It would allow those folks in um, Creekside to get access to Heritage in the stoplight. Paul's been at um, planning and zoning numerous times. Thank you for your patience, Paul. Um, and planning and zoning has signed off on this. Yes, they actually do pass. Well, you guys have done a great job. I've watched that develop over the last years. I remember the first time I drove out there, I was on the school board, and I heard plans that this was going to get done. I thought, ooh. But you guys had better vision than I did, so well done. To approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the uh, first reading, reading of Ordinance 632. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, old business. I don't know, Brian, is there anything there that we need to rehash? Moving on then to standing committee reports, the golf course. I want to thank Andrew again for the tour of the riprap project that was being done. And uh, we just about got hit by a golf ball, but other than that, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, it was at least 20 yards away. And, and Andrew jumped right, right in front of me, and so <laughs> we, were all, we were all fine. He was taking the bullet. <laughs> he was taking the bullet. <laughs> I'm not sure what uh, what we all do, but uh, here I know we have a some seasonal staff to uh, mm -hmm. to hire. Or do we ask Andrew if he has any comments on how's it going? I know you had a hundred days of golf or a hundred hours of golf today. Yeah, just uh, I can give a little update on the sure. season. Things are going really well. Um, it's hot now. It was kind of rainy and uh, stuff in April, but uh, revenue numbers are great. Rounds of golf are up almost a thousand over this time last year so we've been busy um, outing in event season is going so we had the hundred holes of golf this year we have seven or eight left this month so I'm really pleased and they're out working on cleaning up the project today so it's moving along good so yeah of course look great when thank we were you driving around yes Kelly does a fantastic job we're was, appreciative I, of him I was so so impressed with the equipment that you people have done a great job of even former Mayor Beasley could lay back and mow grass. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, several seasonal staff to approve to hire. Second. Motion and second to approve the hiring of seasonal staff for the golf course. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Parks and Rec. Uh, again, I had a chance to get a little. Any comments, Devin, that you want to make? You're good? Okay. We have uh, pool improvements pay application. Would need a motion. Can you tell us what this is again, Brian? Sure. It's, it's uh, pay application number 10 for the pool improvement project in the amount of $90,936.92. Motion and second to approve the uh, payment. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is the pool going over well? <coughs> yes, very yes. well. Uh, yeah, it's been 
busy. But the instant hot temperatures, it's been overheated. Yeah, yeah. We did get a chance to, to tour that also. And Should I go down the slide? I <laughs> passed this time, but maybe next time. <laughs> Uh, next is the uh, pool employee wage adjustments, Brian. Yep, Riley White is a new hire, or return, uh, but it's a new hire. Um, Carmen Moeller, Kate Jacobson, and Atlee Cody are uh, raises since they're getting their, uh, contention upon them getting their WSIs, which they're getting their training last week. Two of them got it last week, one of them is pending. Great. Motion second to uh, approve the pool employee wage adjustments. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And we're doing well with hiring staff? And yep. Yeah, yes. yeah our, our pool staff is, we're fully staffed. Great. That's so fantastic. We're ahead of Sioux Falls. Yeah, I was going to say I've read that there. Lesson started today, and uh, Tyson said it went well, and the parents are excited, and That's great. it's a pretty full session, so. Great. Up and running. I think still down Yep. Well, well done. Uh, then we have uh, seasonal employees. Yep. <laughs> Tyler Waxdahl and Kiera Honkin. I'll make a motion to approve. You do a great job. Great. Second. Motion and a second to approve. The seasonal staff, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, public safety. Jamie, anything you want to tell us? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I like to hear you talk. Guys, we have quite a few things on here. Um, the sergeant promotion, Mr. Baker, he cannot be here tonight. He is out on paternity leave, and they're showing their new child off to in-laws and grandparents. So um, he apologized as well for not being here, but hopefully he'll get to meet you guys at a meeting in the future. And then we did conclude the uh, backfilling and hiring. So hopefully we're all done now with all the internal promotions during the backfill and with the hiring, and now we are back up to our pre-approved number and fully staffed once those guys come on board so they have the conditional offers um, we're very excited about our hires we had a a lot of good applicants it was not an easy decision and we do have a uh, contingency list of officers that hopefully we will need in the near future but uh, we do that have that in case so um, thanks to everybody for helping out and our representative for being there and julie who's not here for being there for all that so no with uh, unless anybody has any questions we're just excited to be done finally and move on, and hopefully uh, won't have anything for you for a while. So, James, how yep. many did we end up hiring? Two. Just, just two? Yeah, our, we were pre-approved for 14, but with uh, the chief vacancy and then losing our last hire, um, it left us with two vacancies, and when we do internal promotions, all those vacancies fall to the bottom. So it would be Officer 13 and Officer 14, and we'd be fully staffed again. Are they... Uh, Local or? Yeah, they're both. Uh, one of them currently works at the uh, Minneapolis County Jail in, uh, in Sioux Falls, and the other one has just graduated from USD, and his fiance got a job at Brandon Elementary teaching, so he, uh, I think he's going to be a great fit, and they'll have ties to the community. So, yeah, they're both very good candidates. Thank you, Jamie. I, I enjoyed also sitting in on the interviews for the sergeant's position, and Dana asked great questions. I mean, I, I was kind of fun to, I've done a lot of interviewing in my life, but she, she came up with, with a question I'd never heard asked before, and I thought it was really good. So, And I was impressed with all of the candidates, and uh, I think Andrew's going to do well as a, as, as a leader. So, first of all, we have a motion. We need a motion to approve a wage adjustment for Andrew Nygaard. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve the wage adjustment for Andrew Nygaard. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We also have a wage adjustment for Daniel Francis. Motion to approve. Second. 
Motion and second to approve the wage adjustment for Daniel Francis. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Third wage adjustment, Zachary Kiefer. Motion and second to approve the wage increase for Zachary. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And again, I, I was impressed with the sergeant that was, uh, he's, he's going to be a really strong leader for us, and I think we're fortunate to have this young man. So we uh, need a motion to approve the promotion to sergeant for Andrew Baker. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the promotion. Uh, Mr. Baker, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then, as was uh, stated uh, here a minute ago, we are hiring two additional police officers to fill the force. And Joseph Reagan, Reagan and Kevin Crone. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the hiring of the two gentlemen stated. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, just, just a reminder, that's contingent upon passing a psych test and a physical, sure. et cetera. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, we move on to some administrative tax abatement is the first item. This was recommended by Minneapolis County uh, for a, a lot that a church purchased. A motion and a second to approve the tax abatement on the church property. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 1121, amending resolution number 0921. Um, back in April, we, we or the council authorized the issuance of $4.6 million in sales tax revenue bonds with resolution 0921. The bond attorney drafting, which was not our city attorney, Marceau, um, did not include language in that resolution pertaining to the municipal bond debt service reserve insurance requirements. Uh, they did catch that on this next review. Uh, resolution 1121 will amend resolution 0921 and include the language pertaining to the debt service reserve insurance policy. Are there any questions on that? Okay, we would need a motion to approve that. Second. A motion and a second to approve the uh, resolution 1121, amending resolution resolution 0921. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is the 2021 health insurance renewal. I know. Uh, <coughs> There was a meeting today on this, yep. and I see Mr. Sanyu is great to have you here. I'm so glad that I can be the, you could, this will be your first day, and then we can talk about health insurance on your yeah. first, you know, so. <laughs> Nothing I like more. Yeah, I bet, yeah. <clears throat> it's better <laughs> well, I think you've got, yeah, you've got the uh, spreadsheet in front of you there. Um, and I think you saw some recommendations, I, I believe, uh, of what has been proposed. Um, we did get back uh, health partners, finally. Um, that was a bit of a struggle. Just to kind of bring you guys back up to speed, Avera said, no, we're not going to offer any, any options. We're not going to offer a plan to you. Sanford said the same, and United Healthcare as well. So, and I, and I thought, I wasn't sure we were even going to get anything from health partners, but here it is. Um, we had 51 options from them, and then we have 27 from Wellmark. I think between Brian and myself, so far we've tried to narrow that down to what you see in front of you as far as options to keep somewhat close to where we're at currently today. Casey, what was the struggle with health partners? Uh, a lot of it was applications. The application process was tied up either with incomplete applications or missing information. Um, a pretty picky underwriter, um, or what I like to call them as business prohibitors. But, uh, you know, so it was, yeah, it, it was a struggle. Second. 
I remember talking about the applications last year. I thought we kind of had that figured out so we could have the stuff sooner. What can we do next year so we aren't down to the wire yeah, I, like this again? The, the only, there's a couple things. Um, one, we could start in February, just, just start doing applications. I don't, nobody's gonna like to do that because there's, a lot of, there's some years we wouldn't need to do applications. Um, going to the large, if we go into the large group market, that's going to, they don't do, they don't app a lot of times for rates because they'll have, they'll have a more, um, they'll have a broader uh, health history on the group. They'll get more information from the carrier. So we may be able to alleviate that. Other, uh, also, I would be willing to come in, sit down, put me in a room, bring employees in, whatever, one or two at a time for how many days it takes, I would do that. Um, other than that, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a good answer for you, but those are two things I've thought of, maybe app earlier, just to get in front of it. Or like I said, I'll come in and, and we can sit down with each of them, make sure then we, we get everything filled out at that time. What, why did um, Avira and Sanford choose not to they're, look they're, at us? Yeah, they're based on our, our current health status off the applications. They, they said they, they ran numbers, their numbers I believe were 13 and 20 percent higher than what our renewal came in. And so they weren't, I mean there was no reason to release those, those rates. So Casey, or maybe Brian, actually. So, um, what were some of the delays with the with the applications? Is it just they're just incomplete, yeah. uh, missing information. It was minor mm -hmm. stuff. Both Avera and Sanford took these basically the same apps, the same information, and, and developed their rates. Uh, you know, health partners. Every time they'd ask for something, we'd provide it, and they'd come up with something else that they wanted additional information on. So that happened three or four times. Yeah. That'd be my guess. And each time, you know, we've got to get the apps back to the employee, and those employees turn around pretty quickly, usually the next day. But it was, with health partners, it was just one thing after another on the apps. Were they just being ultra picky? Or, or yeah, well, what here, types of things were they sending back for requesting? Well, my feeling on it, Jack, is this: they're new. They're new to the state, and so these companies that come in new, they really have to be cover their backside when they're getting in here new and trying to gain business. They don't want to take on because they just don't have market share, and so that's that's my feeling on it. They want to be ultra conservative. They want to be ultra dot every i, cross every t, you know, before they before they get into these things. That's that's my opinion. So, um, on your offer of coming in, um, and I know in, in my previous company we uh, we had a similar issue one year. And finally, we just said, "Okay, everybody, come into a room." We did four or five different locations, mm -hmm. and basically, we sat there and didn't literally help them, but we walked them through each and every step, and we did it as a group, so you don't have to do each and every one. Is that something that's feasible? to do or, or not? It is and it isn't. Um, you know, most most of the applications, like I said, Avera and, and Sanford didn't have any issues with the information provided. It was all basically the same stuff. You know, there's some of us that have a quite a lengthy list of medications um, that if I came in on Tuesday afternoon, I'd have to have those with me. So it can be done. Um, like I said, the applications got turned around in, in a timely fashion from the employees. It was just every time we submitted something, and Health Partners was late getting their app to us. Every time we submitted what we thought was complete, they asked for something else. So, so I've, the I've coverage never had, that isn't was in place this past year was with well, Mark. Well, um, I've never I've never dealt with an insurance company that. was that picky on information. I understand where they're coming from, but I've never, I've never dealt with one like that. I can just say from, I do like the idea, thank you Casey for offering that, and that's something Brian and they can decide, but I would be, I, I guess with my employer now and previous, they usually do have the insurance come in and you're here, like you said, set up shop for a day or two days, and then you, 
you just come in and fill out your paperwork and you and then that way like you said you just know everything's done i think that's a, an efficient way and then the employees have you know going to talk to the the primary source and so i i do like the idea and if you're willing to do that next year i i like that just because i feel like it's right there but our current plan i know you sent all these so the plan that we're on right now if we suck with the same plan for next year that did that increase 22 percent? is that what it Correct. was okay Correct. and that'd be that's that's on your spreadsheet there the current plan the renewal and then the the alternates that are with wellmark as well as uh, the health partners so the, what you're saying the current one is that would be the third column or the second current one current plan is the, the first, first column plan in wellmark, wellmark right yep Um, the office copay goes from 20 to 25. ER copay goes from 150 to 300. Now, typically, if you go to the ER and you're admitted, hospitals waive that right. that ER fee. And then the, the biggest change is the prescription meds. You know, those will go up from currently the tiers 835 and 50 will go up to 20, 40, and 80. You know, Casey and I talked the other day. The biggest. Or the biggest impact on rates in the near future is going to be yeah. prescription drugs. Yeah, they think it'll be 40% of your overall medical care costs will be prescription drugs. So they're really trying to get a handle on that going forward. Um, I will mention, too, just on that on that prescription drug with the higher cost, keep in mind if they're on a, whatever that drug, if that drug comes in at $15 or $12 or whatever it is, they're going to pay that amount. They're not going to pay. If it's a $20 drug, they're not going to pay the, the 20 instead of the 15 So, um, you know, and that, ha that, that definitely happens. But Casey, a quick recap on rates of the last few years, because I just, I just get blown away looking at this. So the monthly on the renewal, which I know we're not recommending that, but that mm -hmm. calculates out to almost 850000 And I, I, I swear it was 300000 less than that just a couple, three years ago. Do you have any history of, like, rates? Is this hitting heaviest, like, on, as far as percentages? Are the jumps the biggest on the family? I mean, obviously the cost is more, but... You know, no, they do. Uh, they do an even. So if it's seven percent or twenty-two percent on the single, it's that on the family. So it's 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 the exact same for each segment. Is that is that answer? Is that what you're yeah, kind of looking for? Yeah, I think so. Do you, do you have any pricing on what we had the last few years? Yeah. Uh, how far do you want to go? I've got. Um, let's see here. Years here. Okay, so 20, let's go 2019. Um, employer, employee plan, or employee cost was 614. Uh, employee spouse was 1257. Employee children was 1162. And family was 1884. That's 2019. Uh, 20, 2020, it should be, well, it was right there. It should be on the list there, but 2020, 658, 1349. 1247 in 2022. Uh, if you want to go back, you can go look at 18. Maybe that's what you're looking at. 2018, 523 on a single, 1071, uh, 990, and 1606. But keep in mind, in, in 18, we had a negative 7.3% increase, so our rates went down 7% that year. So you got to take that into account. So in this spreadsheet, where's the, excuse me, where's the, the, uh, the increase reflected? I was trying to do the math, and I don't come up with the increase. The increase. It's the, uh, the 22 percent. I didn't, I didn't do a percentage change. I just, I just showed you the actual numbers on the monthly premiums. So again, the one that you're recommending, Brian, is the, which column? The third column. The third column. The S SYV yeah, TF2-M. TF2 yeah. So it's basically going, an employee would go from 
single 658 to 779. Correct. Also included in this was the employees continuing to contribute 5% of their insurance premiums. Right. I did not include the retirees. We have two retirees on the policy since we don't pay those premiums. Um, and then I, I projected out um, those costs for direct pay, which is the deductible reimbursement, uh, dental insurance, and then modern woodman contribution to come up with the total projected 2021 insurance cost compared to 2021 budget. How many uh, employees are presently on the plan? 36. So is this right? So of the 779, like if it's a single employee, they just pay 5% of that, right? Correct. Okay. And how many are, do you have it broken down, single, family? Yep. 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 Uh, if it's, it'd be on the, uh, it's on this, it's on this sheet here, Jim. Okay. About okay. midway down yep. through the. I see it. Yeah, we've got seven singles. Mm -hmm. Four employee spouse, four yep. employee children, 21 family. I see that. Oh, okay. So, Casey, if we go with the current plan and renew it, that's 22%. Now, with the Wellmark SV or SWV, what increases that then? It's, I know it's not 22%, but what increase would it be from last year's budget? <laughs> Don't ask me that. You I don't didn't, know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. I don't. I don't know what the percentage. Because it looks of, of like there. I don't know. I'm just looking at the bottom, right? So it's 786, and then to 761. So I guess it's like what 20,000. And Mayor, so you know one of the unique situations about picking this every year, our fiscal year and our health insurance year are not aligned. Yeah. yeah, so part of the complexity is this is projecting out a budget that was set before, but we're going to be going into budget session here soon, and that's not reflected. So if this council were to say we want to tighten up the belt, then we may have an issue with what we select today. You know, I'd, I'd make one comment. One of the things that I was, as I was going around meeting new employees, I was impressed with the longevity of staff. And I think these are reasons why you have longevity of staff. This is a, it's a fair plan to the, to the employee, but and personally, I. I, uh, I like the fact that we've been able to keep our employees, and I got to believe insurance is a part of it. My question would be: Right now, they do that buy-in. How much does that actually help us? Like, even if we would decide just to say, like, still kind of, you know, like you said, the, we have great benefits, but part of it is, is that they do have to pay so much of it. Does that really help us? You know, we have two new employees coming on, right? How much does that really help offset the cost, or is it better off just doing a streamline of just saying everyone, this is just what, is, a, yeah, like a, a flat, flat. Yeah, flat, yeah, like instead of, because I understand way back when, decades mm -hmm. ago, when Brandon started, it was a way mm -hmm. to incorporate for people to stay here, but you still look at some of the wages and stuff like that, and if you're starting out with a new family, like Chief Steffel said, I mean, he has one that they're going to get married, I'm assuming, maybe not, but, you know, they're going to start a family, but that's a lot if they have health care of four, is. you know, four or three like that buy-in. So that, that's just my question. Is there a way we can just get rid of that? We could. Uh, in practice, the vast majority of employees don't go on to family coverage. They take the employee-only coverage until you're four. Okay. 
Okay, and then after that, then we'll go. Okay. Yes. So, I know for me, for my for my instance, I did pay those those premiums because mm -hmm. um, I had family coverage. But the vast majority of employees that we've been hired in the last, geez, quite a while, have waited until that fourth year. What other ways? I know we looked at a different plan. Is there other things you can think of that we can still keep benefits lower? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, most municipalities that I guess I looked into, they pay 25%, right? And our employees pay 5%. So to keep it 5%, how can we still... Is there other ways that you can see us cutting costs and instead of always shopping around? Or for, no? for insurance, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's kind of been by feel with the insurance renewals, whether or not we shop around when we had the negative decrease in premiums, we didn't shop around because that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. um, it all depends on, on you know, what, what everybody's comfortable with as far as an increase. Yeah. You know, if I... I the last few years, last we've, year. we've shopped. Yeah, didn't last year we discussed if it wasn't over 10%. Is that what we said, Barb? I thought we said something like, if it wasn't during, over 10%, we're just not going to worry about it, right? budget time, you set a budget number, and that budget number is down there, um, the 771, 710. And what Brian's proposing is under that budget, budget. number. Yeah. And that's what you said last yeah. year. So. But I just thought with increases, I think we even just said, if it's like under 10% increase, then who cares really, right? I thought that's what we Yeah, and it's, it, it's based on the budget number. You know, if, if the renewal rate, which is which was 22% increase, was, was over the budget number, so that triggered that we would go out and, and shop. Okay. So okay. looking at the plans, the Wellmark plan that I recommended comes in below budget, and that's even with, you know, the 2021 um, direct pay. We projected that high because we've had pretty heavy usage this year, but historically, you know, we're down... 20 grand or less in those. So we're anticipating that hopefully <laughs> that will, some of us will stay out of the hospital. So that would, that should decrease. So again, I, I guess I didn't see this at the bottom. You, you budgeted 771 and, and the bid is 761? Correct. So that's, that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. Um, I, w I would just like to reiterate, we did set a budget um, number last year. I would like to compliment you guys on actually coming in under budget. I appreciate that. And that being said, I would like to make a motion that we approve this plan. Yes. We have a motion to approve the uh, uh, plan, the 2021 help. Uh, insurance renewal as stated. Do I have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the 2021 health insurance renewal plan that uh, is under budget. So all in favor say oh, aye. I have a quick question. Sorry, Cooking. Mayor. I'm sorry. So it says here that this recommendation may be subject to change. So what does that mean? Like if we vote on this today, though, you, you can't change. No, no. My, re my recommendation that I wrote Friday. I had a meeting with staff oh, today. Okay. So I, not like next Monday. No, like, no. Wait a minute, Brian, you're Let me clarify me. that. I had okay. a meeting with staff today okay. where we went over this spreadsheet with them. Okay. And, and told them my recommendation is going to be this plan with Wellmark. It's, it's staying with Wellmark. Okay. Um, you know, there's always a pain in the butt to change carriers and that it's as close as we can get to our current plan. So, you know, a couple of questions raised, but nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. Okay. Good. So that's why it might change. Good question. If we go to a higher okay. deductible, then we are 50000 to the good ahead, right? Is that, am I reading that? Correctly? For that next, that Wellmark. Right. Yep. Yeah, if you went to a higher deductible, 000. you would save. And we only have 36 employees. So that's like 1400 an employee saved or available towards the deductible. Yeah, keep in mind, keep in mind on it, <clears throat> just something I want to point out, that your out-of-pocket max really jumps on that family in that, in that plan. So just something to, you know, and it does jump on the single as well, but it really jumps on the family compared to where the renewal and, the, and their, and their uh, plan that they're recommending right now. Just want to point that out. And co-insurance increases 10%. So 
ballpark idea? I mean, do we have a lot of, of cases where it's getting maxed out? I mean, if we have $51,000 to play with. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of what he touched on earlier on the, you know, it's trending higher this year. Um, you know, we're, we've been running pretty, we run pretty consistent. Yeah, I would say it's 17, 18 to 20, that it's pretty consistent every year of people that max out that that out of pocket, that deductible out of pocket. Casey, quick question. Yeah. This though, plan two, is this the one last year we we didn't vote for, but this is one that has extra perks in it too, right? Like that gives you a little bit more like, more we, wellness we checks, right? We have yeah, those preventative, we have those preventative now. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay, yep. I thought what this plan gave more. What you're gonna okay. do with this will allow, this will be a non-grandfathered plan, okay? You'll have your preventative like you have always had. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be, it's free. The preventative on these plans is free compared to your going into your <clears throat> co-pay on your preventative benefits. Oh. Also, if we can, in the future, if we ever had to, we can offer, offer multiple plans. So if you're contributing, it, it, it doesn't, it, to me, it doesn't benefit you right now to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but if that contribution level ever would change, then you can start bringing in employees and go and say, hey, what plan, you know, here's, we're gonna offer three plans. Which plan do you want to choose based on your, you know, the oh, money that you've okay. got? It, yep, on your contribution, what plan do you want that best fits your budget? So this will give us a little flexibility. And then we're changing groups. Correct. Inside, their, inside the Wellmark market signal, we're going from a small group to what they call their mid-size mid market, which is 50 plus, 50 to 100 in employee size. So... Um, I think it'll be, I mean, the grandfather was a great deal for us for, for years. It really benefited us for years. We've outgrown it. Yeah, um, and, and well, Mark, these carriers as a whole, they're, most of them are all growing that, that grandfathered status. So um, I think it's going to be a good thing going forward. Casey, yeah. you just said we're moving up to a 50 plus employee plan. It, we only have it is. It's based on it, they base it on a on an average number. Where they take your part time, your seasonal, and your full time, and they give you an average. And if that average hits over 50, that's the market segment they put you into. So it's some sort of a weighted average. Yeah, correct. Like full -time equivalents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. During, during the winter months, we've got 36 full time employees, 37 full time employees. During the summer months. They send out a, an audit, basically an audit form that, that Brian or so has, has to fill that out and uh, figure out or send it in, yeah. So another question I have, Brad, I had asked Brian this Thursday night. I'm familiar. I'm sure you're familiar with um, captives or not? Captives, as far as captive captive insurance grouping, maybe not. No. Okay, Jim, are you? I, I am familiar with it. It's where you basically you, you pool. You're in a pool of, of similar oh. companies, okay. yeah, like com like companies you might say companies or I don't know if sure. they have captive for for cities or we would call I would call yeah I would if you would have said pooling yeah I mean we're, I'm familiar with pooling but um, yeah, I've heard it as captive yeah too. right yeah basically one of the things that the captive does is kind of sets um, certain parameters. Every employee, uh, well, it really strongly encouraging health incentives. You know, yeah, we, um, you're in with others though. It's right. it's a risk reward type uh, situation. I mean, you know what it is. I, yeah, we've dealt with that here uh, as far as incentive programs, and I've done them with other with other companies as well. They're extremely hard to to judge that if you're getting the return. On that that you think you are they're extremely hard to judge that and they're usually if it does turn out they're usually years down the road yeah, that you so figure it out um, our company we looked at it very closely and we had uh, 600 and some people on insurance so it was but we we were self-insured so it was a yeah bit, you're yeah it's a self insured mm -hmm, yeah. well okay. we had we had I don't, I don't know how many employees we had on the corporate level but um, it was a significant savings on our, on our corporate level, and it seemed to be very well received. So I, I guess I was just curious if there was some such a thing for 
municipalities in general. But I can I can double check, but I'm not aware of anything. Yeah. Um, there aren't any cities in the state that are pooled with other cities. Yeah. Well, this was nationwide, if it's, not international. It might not even be like businesses. It's just yeah, you, know, sure. you can have similar size mm -hmm. in dollars is what they really pool usually. Yeah. 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 So you're talking about like if, if Hartford and T and Harrisburg and us all go in together as a yeah. Well, it's and it may you're not looking be, nationally, it may not be, oh. yeah, okay. and possibly even internationally. Right. Well, the state of South Dakota years ago would never. They we had they had they had some associations that tried to do that, like the Boilermakers and that. They were out of Illinois, and they started trying to sell their plan in South Dakota. South Dakota said, they next day they said it's not going to happen. So and it was a good plan. The rates were great. We would have loved to have had access to it, and it was a it was a Walmart blue, or it was a Blue Cross Blue Shield product. So, um, it's like I don't I guess we're, I don't know if we're on the same page or not, but not really. uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it, we, it, it'd be worth investigating, but it, mm -hmm. I, there there's risks to it too. I mean, you're at the mercy of X business over here could have a terrible year, and you're gonna have, help supplement yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and, even though you had a good year. Now you could have the bad year and, yeah. and they're right. supplementing you. So there's this thing. Anyway, it gets, let's, it does uh, get spread out. Over it does. It gets spread out. You usually have. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, so if this council were to decide to tighten the belt on the budget cycle this year, which is going to cover half of the premium, what's that look like next year? Then we're looking at it's going to almost feel twice as much of an impact if that happens because we will have already used up half of our budget dollars, right? I don't know because I don't know what the rates are going to do next year. I mean, I, if that's, you know. Uh, but a half of our year would still be in this year. Yeah, these, yeah, these rates are set for your next 12 months from July, from July 1 to July 1. Yep. You know, we've talked about trying to change that date to January in the past, mm -hmm. and we get, we're kind of, it's a double-edged sword. We, we're allowed to do it, but once we commit to it, let's say we go to Walmart and we say, hey, we want to change our effective date from July to January, you're pot committed, and whatever they release you for that rate, because they're going to get another renewal now within six months, whatever you get, you get. And so it's a, it's a roll of the dice. We've done it before, but it's, it's, it's a gamble. Well, well, not Mark. only that, but at least now we know six months worth of insurance costs mm -hmm. in the 2022 budget. If we were to change to a January 1 renewal mm -hmm. date, when we do the budget in July, August, we would we would be guessing. It would be a total guess as to what 2022 rates would be. Are there any other questions? Okay, we have a... Motion and a second to approve the uh, plan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the OD Farm Edition Preliminary Plan. Yeah, OD Co. submitted a preliminary plan for, well, we've talked about it twice now, uh, for the development of that subdivision, uh, OD Farm Edition. Um, the plans have been reviewed by staff. They meet our requirements for a preliminary plan, such as street width, um, construction, typical section on the street, the layout of the sewer and the water and the storm sewer, as well as the preliminary zoning, which you had the first reading on the ordinance tonight. So staff recommends approval. Planning and zoning reviewed it uh, Thursday night and recommended approval. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, OD Farm Edition preliminary plan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Again, good luck with that, Paul. Takes a lot of planning to do this. Yep. I was telling my wife this agenda is 196 pages long, but there was a lot of this. This is a small agenda. Yeah. This is a small packet. No, it is. Compared, oh, compared yeah. to the last few. <laughs> well, I was just. It's under 200 pages, so we're happy. Yeah. 
No, I was I was impressed though with all of the drawings for all of this addition that I, yeah, I admire I admire the forethought and the engineering that takes to, to go into this. I would make one request for these things is is to have a we're not trying to look at it on these small screens. When you blow it up it just it's very difficult to see it. But um actual plan sheet. Oh yeah, sure. It is kind of tough. Yeah. Get closer so we can look at it prior to or during the meeting on these things. Mm -hmm. It'd be yeah. very, very helpful. Well this this is, this will be good. I like the fact that the street's going in there. All right, we'll move on to streets. If there's any street report that we need to chat through. Just information. Okay. A lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I, I would encourage uh, council members to come and P, come to PNZ because that's where you find out a, a lot of information. Yeah, yeah, and that that's really helpful. I go generally. All right, and that's on the same night as the briefing sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. Okay. only if we're lucky enough to have two meetings in the same night yeah. okay. all right there is a couple of uh, items wage adjustment for troy uh, hillman motion, to motion and second to approve the wage adjustment for troy all in favor say aye, aye. opposed and we have a joint repair project proposal. Yeah, this, this is for Holly Boulevard and then a portion of Aspen from uh, Split Rock to McCarty Road. We received one bid from Big Al's Concrete in the amount of 347 993 Will we have to shut down roads or are we just gonna go down to one lane? It'll, it'll go down, they'll do one lane at a time is what the plan is and then uh, completion date is prior to school. So from those East Holly from Boulevard. Holly from Sioux, Sioux to Split Rock. So all the way, yeah. Sioux, And then Aspen from Split Rock to McCarty Road, Thanks. roughly. Okay. So it's a joint repair project, very similar to what the DOT did through on, on Split Rock Oh, was that five years ago now, roughly? And then they'll take in, take all of the seal out of the out of the joints. They'll remove that and reseal the joints as well. So they'll fix the joints that need fixing, and then seal the cracks back up. Have we used Big Al's before? Yeah, Big Al does a lot of work uh, in town. We use we used Big Al too. So yeah, just gotta like that name. So. Oh, yeah. I just like to say that every once in a while. He's doing a lot of work in town this year. Yes, he does. Okay, we need a motion to approve the uh, repair project. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the uh, joint repair project. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, we have a agreement with Bethany Meadows. Brian? Correct. Uh, we'll reimburse uh, an agreement with Bethany Meadows to reimburse them $15,148.54 for uh, incorrect meter readings. Okay. Any questions? Refresh my memory. What was the cause of the incorrect meters? Approximately 30000 What was the reason? Oh, oh the uh, reason. There was a we had the wrong multiplier. Scale, yeah, the multiplier was wrong in the billing system. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the payment to Bethany Meadows. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, water tower project materials testing pr proposal from Geotech. Yep, the water tower project's underway. They're boring foundations right now. Uh, hopefully be done in the next couple of days. So if, if you want to watch the fascinating process, you need to go out there fairly soon. No, no, it's it's actually kind of fascinating. Is this is this the new water tower yep. we, we were out at the other day for the ribbon yep. cutting? That's amazing. 
Yeah, there, those those uh, pilings are going down 80 feet. 80 feet. Was there like 75 of them, Raleigh? 75 of them. Yeah. The tower is going to be 100. 150 feet tall. 150 feet. That was amazing. And it's going to hold 1. 1. 1.25 million gallons. And the one we have now is 450? 250. 250. Yep. Wow. That's, it's an impressive project. So on that same note, I think it was Friday we hit 1.5 million gallons. Sunday was, or Saturday was 1.64. Um, Monday, or I'm a day off here, so it would have been Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we hit 1.68, and today we've used over 1.37 again. So we're going to be pushing our One. watering. Got 1.6 million six, gallons three days. for three days in rows. The trigger to move into the next phase of the water conservation part. Yeah. So we're in yellow right, or we're in green right now. Uh, if we do, if we do hit that, um, we would move to yellow, which is lawn watering on Mondays is zero to one, yep. zero and one. Tuesdays two and three. Address. Once a week. Once a week. So can we, a week. can we inform the public that we're getting close so that they can? Be proactive. Yeah, I was just waiting for Raleigh's update. And I'll get it, then I can update the website, yep. so they can update the graph, and then I'll get it out. I think mm -hmm. that's good. It, it looks like almost two more weeks of 90 plus degree mm -hmm. yeah. weather. So. Yep. I I wrote a uh, notice today. A person down on Hackberry was watering their yard at two in the afternoon, so he was on the right day, just <laughs> wrong time. So we just gave them half a notice. And some of them push it. There's, we've noticed uh, on the trending on the water tower and stuff, it's usually about 6 a.m. that the, the tower is dropping. Sure. And it's gotten as low as 11 feet. What is the time that they're not supposed to? Not supposed to water from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. I noticed somebody up the street was watering at 5.58, so. I saw that on the way here. If we don't do text, I guess I would request that we do Facebook because people get notices yeah, we'll on need, Facebook. I just need updated numbers before I get it out. Yeah, and it's on the city's website and stuff and everything, too. Website so. doesn't give people notice that anything's been added, though. So my preference is Facebook or text. I think that's, I think that's good. So, Ryan, what, when we move into yellow, what are the restrictions again? Uh, you can water House one numbers. Day yeah, basically one day a week. House numbers that end with a zero and one can water on Mondays. Um, two and three, three is Tuesdays, four and five Wednesdays. And it has to be that way for seven, seven, seven days, days under the 1.6. So then how do we get out of that? Though? If we go seven days seven under 1.6, then we can go back to a green. Okay, yeah, it's six days in a row, but hit the level that seven days. Three, three, three days. days in a row. Okay. All right. yep. If we don't come out of it, then it goes to red, Jack, and that's no yep. watering. Thank you, Riley. Yep. And I, I agree with Dana. Anything we can do to inform, it would be, be, be good. Anyway, it was uh, it's an impressive project. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep, so Geotech, the proposal from Geotech is to perform mm -hmm. testing services on the project. Uh, total amount not to exceed 17500 Did we vote yet? No, no, yet. no not yet. Second. Motion to approve and second to approve the water tower project testing. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. Motion carries. Any new business? Oh, I have a question. Can I do something new? Okay, I just want, it's more like a thank you. Okay, so today was our first day for Safety Town. So I'm very excited, and I just want to thank Chief Steffel and Officer Sarda. They've been wonderful, the whole PD, actually. And the city, Christina and Brian, have been great about getting this together. I think today, Officer Sarda agreed with me. I think it went really well. And so next council meeting, I just want to, I'll probably give you guys a presentation. But I'm excited and a lot of good feedback. The kids really seem to enjoy it. So it's a hands-on learning for five- and six-year-olds. And we have a lot of guest speakers over the next two weeks. So I just want to say thank you to all of you guys because you've been great helping this put this together. So 
Thank you. And then just a reminder, if anybody's interested in going to the 2021 elected officials workshop put on by the South Dakota Municipal League and the wonderful city of Pierre on July 14th, let us know. We'll get you registered. If you want to, you want to stay at a motel, let us know. We'll get that um, figured out too. And then on the last page, um, we're going to end on a, a good news note. Sales tax revenue um, is up, not only from last year, but from the year prior to both uh, general sales tax and third penny. And keep drinking, keep drinking that booze. <laughs> 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 I, I'm doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, Christina, I'm, I'm trying to get back up here. I asked for uh, year to date um, percentage from over, over the last couple of years, the increase in sales tax. Yeah, that on there yet, Not yet. You're looking at probably 20% more and more. Just looking through the numbers. Have we heard more of the American Rescue Act, like, what funds yet? Because that should help with our water sewer, right? Yep, we can. Uh, the easiest way to spend uh, that money is on sewer and water projects. So, you and know, we're, we're scheduled to get about $1.4 million over the next two years. With that, the first payment sometime this summer, I think July, is what we've been told. We have okay. to, again, we have to go through hoops to get the money. Yep. So. Hey, but we can get some money. Yep. So we plan on doing that, but the easiest thing, uh, you know, that we've talked about, we've got that west side uh, sewer project, mm -hmm. which is real easy one to throw the money at, or even the east side one, depending on which one comes in first. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's just good. I was just hoping we were still getting that money. Yep. That was a lot. Any, any? Or do we adjourn? Not yet. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good job, Mayor.